He's like, it's one of RST's best kept secrets. He's like, Owen hasn't even been with 50 chicks yet. He's like, they paint him out to be a, a god, a master at game, but his game sucks, okay? And, he, and he's like, I've caught him in like hundreds of lies. They were close. He's like, he just lies his ass off about everything. What's up guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. And I wanted to tell a very special story today about Owen Cook. Hey, RST Tyler. So let's back up the clock a bunch to June 2012, end of June 2012, okay? I had just hit 100 lay count. I was on some RST mailing list. I didn't realize there were a bunch of scammers yet, okay? I recognized RST Tyler from the book The Game, okay? I had my reservations given the fact that in the book The Game, he's painted out as this weaselly little fucking kind of scumbag character, okay, who just uses people and rips off people's ideas and this and that, okay? He even went so far, for those of you that don't know, the reason, the where real social dynamics came from, Mystery had a company called Social Dynamics, okay? And this was kind of a jab at Mystery. Tyler and Papa, okay, RSC Tyler and RSC Papa, Nick Cobb, stole uh, his company name and tried to throw a little jab at him by calling it real social dynamics, okay? And then they stole his three-day bootcamp model and the whole structure of boot camp, stuff like that, that all came from Mystery, for those of you that don't know, okay, who's the most legit guy in the space besides myself. Um, you know, I mean, not, you know, we're equally legit. It, he doesn't fake any results or anything like that or scam, or, and same with me, okay? Now, I want to tell a very special story about an experience I had during that boot camp with Owen Cook, okay? Before we continue, please subscribe if you have not already. New videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So, I destroyed on that boot camp. Okay? I was doing very, very well. I was crushing at the clubs. Okay, I, I wanted to show off. Okay, that my instructors were Tyler and Todd. Todd hadn't come out of the shadows yet, so to speak. He was kind of an instructor behind the scenes. He was doing some other stuff with poker and hedge funds and stuff, and didn't want his name out in the limelight. Okay, no. I watched those two get fucking destroyed in the club. Okay, absolutely crushed. Uh, more so, Owen. I was following him around, asking him. Um, you know, asking girls what they thought of him because I kept seeing him get blown out like crazy. And I was asking girls what they thought about him after the fact. It was normally weird, gay, awkward, you know, a loser, etc. Creepy. And he was making the students do very creepy stuff as well. Okay, he was having us approach and open with no words for like one or two minutes. Okay, so we'd walk up to the girl and be like, and the girl's like, hey, what's up? And you're just like, right? And the girl is like, it's just weird stuff, right? He had us hold our hands, okay? The, the students were holding hands, jumping up and down, smiling, laughing. Okay, funny enough, this is where I, where I met Sonny Arvado. Sonny Arvado was on this program as well, and we both were already pretty advanced. Okay, I think he was at 60 late count at that time. I had just hit 100. At the time of the boot camp, I was at 103. And I hadn't really met anyone in the community before, okay? I was, I had read Mystery Method and listened to the audiobook countless times at work and on, on the way to and from work when I was working on a missile defense job. And don't worry, I'm getting to the, to the Owen story shortly. It's, it's, a, it's a really interesting story. And I had, you know, learned, like I said, the mystery stuff and gotten results on my own and broke 100 just with Mystery Method, okay? A lot of guys in the modern day ask if they should read Mystery Method. I basically took the best parts of it, massively evolved and optimized it, and then brought in the best parts from naturals and, and from my own innovations and other systems that had a little nugget here or there, okay? But I do not recommend reading Mystery Method in the modern day as it's going to, you know, put you on too limited of a path, okay? It's, it's still very good and better than most stuff out there, but my stuff far surpasses it at this point, okay? And has for a long time. So what exactly happened? Oh, by the way, one more quick thing about the, the jumping up and down holding hands. I was friends with this really cool natural dude, okay, who was like all jacked and tattoos and all this stuff. He had a lot of social connections around Philadelphia. And he like stopped responding to my texts like after that boot camp. And I ran into him one day like a week later and I was like, dude, what's, what's all that about? And he's like, oh, I saw you holding hands, jumping up and down and yelling with a bunch of guys at the club. Okay, because Tyler had said like, oh, you gotta like bring the party, okay. It was like fucking total ridiculousness. And, and by the way, most of the teachings on this program were just abstract woo-woo concepts. There's no practical strategy given, okay? No one was told how to run the interaction. No one was told how to text. No one was told how to set up the dates, nothing, okay? All they said was, 
be clear in your intent, be free from, free from outcome, okay? Trust the process, like all this just, you know, stuff that doesn't translate, and all you, for those of you that follow RSD, you know what, it, what I'm talking about, okay? It's just a lot of like hot air, a lot of nonsense being spewed out, okay? So we get towards uh, the last day, like the, the boot camp's over, okay? This is like the final day and there's like the hot seat on a Sunday. But before that, like we're sitting in front of the whole group and Owen had me come up to the front of the room. Okay, Tyler Durden had me come up and sit next to him at the front of the room. And he's like, this guy basically had a perfect night. He's like, he was absolutely destroying. He's like, I haven't seen anything like this. Blah, blah, blah. And, the, and this was 2012. This was, my game was only at 100 late count. Okay, now it's 13X that I just hit 1300 recently. And he said like, you know, I don't really want to give any critique or anything because he had like a perfect night. So then he starts, so I'm sitting up next to him. He's, I can't, I think he was on this side of me. It, it doesn't matter. But the point is, I was very close, right? And he starts telling this story to the group about how he met this girl at Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Okay, so this is in Philadelphia. Ruth Chris is like a high-end steak place. And he tells the, the crowd that this was like top three hottest girls he's seen in all his time doing game, okay? So in my mind, like I hadn't fully seen that he's, you know, like cap capable of all this like scamming and lying yet, okay? And I said to him, um, or no, not I mean, so, so people are like, tell a story, you know, what, what is this about? But I'm thinking in my mind, like, okay, if this is the top three hottest girls he's ever seen, then this girl must be like a perfect, perfect, perfect 10 because he's met so many girls doing all these approaches in the game, etc. So he starts telling the story. He said like, oh, I just sat next to her, we're flirting, got her number, etc. And everyone's like, oh, are you gonna meet up with her? Because he was flying back to LA the next day. This was like a Sunday. He's like, oh, I'm gonna call her right now and invite myself to come over. He's like, all right, everybody be quiet. So he puts on speakerphone. He's just trying to show off and be cool, right? Puts on speakerphone, calls the girl. He's like, what are you doing later? And he's just like making all his faces like, you know, like the, the, the crowd's all like, cool. And She's like, oh, like this or that. I, I don't know. And he's like, can I come by and hang out? And she's like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And he's like, oh, I'll be a, a good Bible boy. I remember this exactly. He's like, I'll be a good Bible boy and have my hands in the lap. I'll sit on the other side of the couch. It's like really chody remarks. That's not how you deal with like a girl. It's uncomfortable about you coming over. It just looks like desperate. But anyways, long story short, she refused. And he's like, ah, oh, that bitch, oh, whatever. And but. But when, and then he starts texting her and he's still trying. And while he was texting her, he had one of those phones where it had the phone number at the top, okay? And I'm very good at memorizing things. And I memorized her phone number, okay? Which is a lot easier than it, than it sounds. You can like group numbers together. And so if, if, for those of you that know about psychology, we can hold like seven uh, pieces of information in our short-term memory, okay? So you can like chunk numbers, all right? So, so you can like chunk the area code, hang that on a peg in your memory. Okay, chunk the next piece, hang on a peg, and then you can repeat like the last four digits wrote, okay? So, I remembered it, remembered it, and then I took my phone out, saved the girl's number, okay? And then after the next day, I have another story about, I, it ended up being Tyler wanted me to come out with him and Todd, because he was so impressed by my game, so the three of us went out, and that's a whole other story. We ended up at a gay club. Uh, I'll explain that story in another video, which is quite interesting. <laughs> you guys are probably wondering if Owen blew a dude. Unfortunately, no. But there is a very interesting story there. So, um, and the reason why I went to a gay club is like the only after hours in a, on a Sunday night. And that's the story for another day. So, long story short, he goes back to LA. I text Todd, okay, and I say, hey, did Owen ever get with that girl? Okay, showing like some, even though I took the number and didn't tell him, I'm showing some respect. Like if he had banged the girl, I wouldn't have hit her up, okay? Todd says no, like she flaked, like they never met up. And now Owen's back in LA, okay? So I text the girl and I say, hey, I just moved to Philadelphia and my friend Owen says that you live here and I'm really curious to meet you. Like I need someone to like show me around the city, all this and that. We text back and forth a bunch and I'm like, hey, can you talk? We get on the phone, we're flirting a whole bunch on the phone and then she agrees to meet up with me, right? And we were like flirting sexual and stuff like that too. So I'm like, oh, it's a done deal. I'm gonna bang a perfect 10. Owen said this is one of the top three girls he met in his life. And I tell her to text me a picture and she's like a five at best, okay? <laughs> Reminds me of, we'll roll a clip here. Coffeezilla actually called Derek Moneyberg a five. We'll roll the clip there. What's the guru equivalent of being a five? 
Derek Moneyberg. Somebody said, what's the guru equivalent of being a five? And this is what I said, Amish. What'd you say? Boom. Moneyberg. Ten. Ooh. Oh. And he made jokes about how I was referring to Derek's girlfriend as a five. Okay, but this is what she was, is her rating. Like very, very average, even a little bit below average. And so that was just a full fabrication that this was the top three hottest girls he's ever seen in his life. It was a busted chick, okay? And so I never even met up with her. But so kind of closing out this story, then I was assisting an RSD boot camp in Vegas, okay? And, or no, no, this was in New York, okay? Vegas was the next year. I was assisting an RSD boot camp in New York with Jeffy, and I'll, I'll make another video about that as well. And I sit down, or I basically like, when I sat with Jeffy and he's like, oh, you better not pull any of that shit like you did before with texting the girl or whatever. I, I, I think I told Todd, by the way, I told Todd, like, look, this chick's busted. Okay, and I sent the fucking, um, the picture of her and he's like, oh my God. And Todd told Owen, okay? And I didn't know that. But then Jeffy is like, you better not pull any of that shit that you did with Owen with like taking a girl's phone number and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh dude, like they didn't hook up and all this stuff. I wasn't trying to be shady. And so I went and found Owen because it was like a multi-coach boot camp in New York. And I said, hey man, I'm sorry about uh, taking that girl's number out of your phone. And he goes, what, what are you talking about? And I go, oh, I took that girl's number off your phone when you were sitting next to me in Philadelphia. And I texted her and like got her picture and stuff. And I said, Todd, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, Jeffy just told me that you told him. And he's like, oh, oh, I, I gotta go, man. And just like left the room. And I was like, first of all, he lied that this girl was a perfect, you know, like one of the hottest girls he's ever seen. Now he's pretending like he doesn't know about it, even though he does. Like Jeff said that he spoke to Owen about it. Okay, and he was just trying to play it off like he had no idea what I was talking about. I don't know if he didn't want, if he was trying to avoid confrontation or, or what it was. But I, I, this was like the start of like the unraveling. Okay, and then I'll make a bunch more videos about this, but then when I was living with Manhor in Vegas the following year in 2013, he's like, it's one of RSD's best kept secrets. He's like, Owen hasn't even been with 50 chicks yet. He's like, they paint him out to be a, a god and master of game, but his game sucks, okay? And, and he's like, I've caught him in like hundreds of lies. They were close. He's like, he just lies his ass off about everything, okay? And there, and there was much, much more that I could, I could talk about, but that's enough for this video. So, there you have it, and this isn't third party or anything like this. This is me seeing this with my own eyes. Okay, this is a direct experience that I had with this guy. And then, you know, as the years advanced, tons more lies were uncovered. And I and I just see him just spouting off, you know, it's it's he he's so caught up in this fantasy and this facade that he's built for himself and the character that he portrays that he's willing to just say anything that will fit that narrative. Okay, but in reality, he's a big loser that sucks at game, okay, that just lies his ass off. And he studies, you know, how to sell the most. That's what he studies. He's just a marketer trying to extract as much money as possible. Okay, he paints himself out to be your friend and to be your ally and to be on your side to help you with game and now with high status, okay, which is all bullshit. It's just to reach a, high, a, a broader audience, okay, because they've already scammed and exhausted the pickup community. So now they're all going to a broader audience. They're teaching business and status and confidence and all this BS, okay? So I'll leave you with that. Please like and subscribe and, and uh, comment if you found this useful. New videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching. I'm John Anthony. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.